If you have a slow query, the first thing you should do is find out what the Oracle database does with this query. There's a feature available in Oracle and many other databases called an execution plan. This is a list of steps that the database takes when it runs the query, and it's a great place to look if you want to see how the query is run and what improvements can be made. If you're using SQL Developer, you can see the execution plan for a query by clicking this button here on the toolbar. You'll see this panel at the bottom of the screen. Another way is to add the words explain plan for before the query. Run this query and you'll see a message saying it has been explained. This step actually generates the plan, but we need another query to view this plan. We can run this query, which selects all of the information from the results of the DBMS XPlan display function. We will see the same information but in a text format, which is great for copying and pasting. I prefer the graphical version, so I'll remove the explain plan for and click the button again. For this video, I'm using a sample database called Gravity, which is a fictional bookstore. I've made the scripts available on my GitHub repository, which I've linked in the description. We can see the explain plan for this query here. What does this information mean and how do we read it? It represents all of the steps that the database takes to retrieve data from tables, join it to other tables, and perform other operations such as sorting and grouping. The general rule is that you read it from bottom to top and read the children before their parents. I'll go through each of these steps that we see here to help you understand what it means and how to read the plan. In SQL Developer, there is this other XML section shown at the bottom of the screen. It takes up most of the display, but I don't think it's relevant for understanding the basics of the plan. I'll probably get some comments from those who are more experienced than me about this, but I think you can hide this for now by clicking on the minus sign next to other XML. So where do we start? We start at the bottom. The step at the bottom says table access in the first column, the operation. In the next column, the object name column, it says cust order. So this step is where the database gets the data from the cust order table. If we look at our query, we can see that we are selecting some data from this cust order table because we can see it in the from clause. In the options column in the explain plan, we see the label full. This is additional information about the step that is performed, which is called table access full. We'll come back to this later. In the cardinality column, we see the number 7550 here. This represents the estimated number of rows processed in this step. For this step, it means there could be 7,550 rows in this table. The cost column represents the cost of this step and all of the steps underneath it. Because it's the first step, the cost only represents this one step, which is 11. It's not a number of seconds or a number of rows. It's an arbitrary number that can be used to compare with other steps and plans. So that's the first step, a table access full on the cost order table. The second step that's performed is the one above it in the plan. This is also a table access full, and it's on the shipping method table. The cardinality value is 4, which means there are 4 rows in the table, and the cost is 3, which is lower than the previous step. The next step is the one above these two steps called hash join. This is a process the database performs to join or relate two sets of data into the one set of data. We've selected data from the cust orders table and the shipping method table. Now the database needs to combine these two tables. The way that this is done for this plan is using a hash join. I won't go into the details of how this works in this video, but you can see just below the hash join is something called access predicates. And underneath that is the text co.shipping method equals sm.method ID. This access predicate section essentially means the field that's used to join the two sets of data together. It usually represents the join clause in the query or the where clause. If we look at our query, we can see that the shipping method table is joined on these columns we just saw in the plan. So the step combines the two sets of data. One thing to note here is that the hash join is not a type of join in SQL. It's a way that the database combines the two data sets and it doesn't matter what type of join you've used in your query, an inner join, outer join, full join, or anything like that. 
We can also see the hash join has a cardinality of 7550, which is because there are that many rows in the cust order table. The cost is also 14, which is the total cost of both steps below it, the cost of 3 for one table and 11 for the other. The next step, moving up the plan, could be this hash join step which is second from the top. But in order to get to that step, there are some steps below it or inside it in this tree. So we have to complete this tree or these steps first before the hash join. This means the next step performed is this table access step on the customer table. This is where the database gets the data from the customer table. We can see the option says full again, like the other tables. The cardinality is 2000, which is the estimated number of rows in the table. The cost is 5, which is in the middle of the other two table access steps. After we get the data from the customer table, the next step is that hash join on the second row here. In this step, the database combines the data from the customer table with the data it had already combined from the shipping method and cust order tables. This join is done on the fields mentioned in the access predicates section, which is the customer ID field. If we scroll up to our query again, we can see our join to the customer table, and the join clause mentions this customer ID column in the same way as in the access predicate. We can see the cardinality of this hash join step is 7550, which means no rows have been added or removed as part of this operation. We can also see the cost is 19, which is the value of 14 from the other hash join, plus the 5 from getting data from the customer table. Finally, we have the top row which says select statement. This is just a summary or overall group of the steps and indicates that the overall cardinality is 7550 and the cost is 19. Our query doesn't do anything else other than combine data from different tables. If we had some steps in our query such as a where clause, order by, group by, having and so on, then we would see additional steps in the explain plan after the hash join or perhaps in other places. So now that we've got an idea of how to read this plan, what should we be looking out for? We want to find steps in the process that may be slow. We can do this in a few ways. First, we can see steps that have a high cost value. We can also look for steps that indicate that an inefficient step is being performed. Let's see if we can find any steps that meet those two criteria in our plan. First, high cost values. A high cost value can be found by looking through the plan and looking for any step where the cost value is higher than others. Let's look at our plan. The total cost is 19, and this is made up of three different steps. The table access on cust order has a cost of 11, the shipping method has a cost of 3, and the customer has a cost of 5. We can see that the cust order step has over half the cost of the entire plan, a cost of 11 out of a total of 19. So that may be a step we want to focus on first. The second method is looking for inefficient steps. Knowing that a step is inefficient is about knowing what the steps mean. I won't go into all of the definitions of the steps in this video, but there's one example in this plan. One of these inefficient steps is called table access full, which can also be called a full table scan. This step means that the database is reading all records in the table as part of this step which is slower than other alternatives. This step is being used on all three of the table steps in this plan. We can tell this because the options column says full in all three steps. So we can see that there is one step that has over half the cost of the plan and all three steps use a full table scan. How can we improve this? One way of improving our query is to add indexes to the table. I've created a video here that explains what an index is but in short, it's an object that can be used to improve the performance of a query. If we had an index on some of the columns in the cust order table, it may use the index to look up data, which would mean a more efficient step would be used, rather than the full table scan. So that's the first thing I'll do in this query. Another way to find a slow part of a query is to look for any functions that are used in the query that may not be used by the index. We could also restructure our query to help the database process it in a more efficient way. Those methods won't work well for this query, because it's a simple query, but they could work for your query if it's more complex. So what happens if we add an index? Let's add an index to the cust order table. 
Generally, I like to create indexes on columns used in either the join clause or the where clause. There are no where clauses in this query. So we'll look at the join clause. In this query, we're joining the cust order table to the shipping method table based on the shipping method ID field. So let's create an index on that. We'll start with create index, then give it a name. We'll create it on the cust order table and the column is shipping method ID. We can run the index which is successful. Now let's see that explain plan again. We can see the overall cost is still the same, which is 19. All three steps use a table access full step. So our new index has not made a difference and was not used. This makes sense now that I think about it, because we're not doing any filtering on the cust order table that the index might be used for. But what about the customer ID? We could create an index on that. That could help the performance of the query. We can run this query to create an index and see it is successful. Now let's run the explain plan again. We can see the plan is unchanged. The same thing has happened. The index exists but was not used. There are indexes on the customer ID and the shipping method ID columns in the other tables because they are primary keys. They just aren't being used perhaps because the database thinks the full table scan is the most efficient way to do it. So we created a couple of indexes, but they weren't used by that query. There may be other things we can do, or there may be no need to improve this query as it's quick enough already. In either case, I hope this video has helped you understand how to read an execution plan. At first, the output of an explain plan can seem confusing or overwhelming, but once we know how to read it and what each step means, and with a bit of practice, it gets easier. If you want to learn more about database design and SQL, visit my website at databasestar.com. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.